Good morning and welcome to our Sunday service here at Bethel Baptist Church in Swavesey. Today is a really special service as we're formally saying goodbye to our minister David Mann who God is calling on into a new ministry at Northfields Baptist Church in Birmingham. David's been serving God here in Swavesey at Bethel for the last 12 years and it's with some real sadness that we say goodbye today particularly in light of the restrictions that are currently in place, which mean we can't quite do it in the way we would maybe like to. However, we're also really excited to see what God has in store, both for David as he moves on and also for us here at Bethel. Today's a time of reflection, a time of thanksgiving and celebration, and an opportunity to look back at what God has been doing over the last 12 years while David's been here. Please join us as we worship and pray together now. Let us pray. God, creator, artist supreme, the potter who forms us, the father who keeps us, the mother who holds us, the word who sustains us, the love who will not let us go. We offer you our sacrifice of praise. Jesus, Messiah, Saviour and friend, the rabbi who teaches us, the prophet who stirs us, the healer who touches us, the one who dies for us, the love who will not let us go, we offer you our sacrifice of praise. Spirit, power, breath of life, the guide who prompts us, the truth who inspires us, the fire who empowers us, the spirit who enables us, the love who will not let us go, we offer you our sacrifice of praise. Dear Father, as we gather for this commissioning service, we pray for your guidance and direction. You have called us to service, to teach and preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. We pray for your divine blessings and favour to be upon all those taking part and David who is being commissioned. We ask that you anoint them because the anointing they receive from you surely abides in them. We pray that this commissioning service will be orchestrated by your Holy Spirit and that your very presence shall be amongst us. This is the prayer of our hearts. Amen.
Prayer from Lindisfarne, Wide Horizons. Good and gracious God, grant to our eyes wide horizons. Increase our vision to see beyond the obvious and into the depths. Let us walk ways that are new, where we do not know the destination. Let us journey in joy and in hope among so many troubles and dangers. Surround us with your protection and peace. May we know that heaven and earth are one. That nothing separates us from you and your abiding love in Christ Jesus. Amen. Save that thou art the 
I'm going to read a selection of verses from Matthew chapter 10, which tell us of how Jesus sent his disciples out to speak for him and warns them that it's not going to be plain sailing. But he says that the words that they are to speak will be given to them. And he assures them that they, the disciples, are of inestimable value to him, the Lord himself. And so he says to them, Behold, I send you out as sheep in the midst of wolves. Therefore be wise as serpents and harmless as doves. Beware of men, for they will deliver you up to councils and scourge you in their synagogues. But you will be brought before governors and kings for my sake as a testimony to them and to the Gentiles. But when they deliver you up, do not worry about how or what you should speak, for it will be given you in that hour what you should speak for it is not you who speak but the spirit of your father who speaks in you whatever I tell you in the dark speak in the light and what you hear in the ear preach on the housetops and do not fear those who kill the body, but cannot kill the soul, but rather fear him, be in awe of him, who is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. Are not two sparrows sold for a copper coin, and not one of them falls to the ground apart from your father's will. But the very hairs on your head are all numbered. Do not fear, therefore, for you are of more value than many sparrows. Amen. So thank you for joining me today, David, just to spend some time reflecting on your time here at Bethel and also looking forward as you move on to Northfield. Thank you. So um, the first question I'd like you to uh, answer is, um, can you remember your first impressions of Bethel? Um, yeah, I guess they were of a church of people that just were, had such a warm welcome when we first arrived. Um, both for my first visit before I preached with a view, but then when the family and I turned up here, it was just overwhelming love and, and welcome. I guess that would be the, the key thing that I remember and would continue to, to think about Bethel. Were there any faces that stood out the first time you, you came here? I guess Ruth and Austin, probably. Um, to me, they kind of epitomise the welcoming, loving kind of face of Bethel right from the beginning. And with them being our almost next door neighbours, you know, they, were, they were just keen to do anything they could to help us to settle in and yeah, they, they sort of represent Bethel in a big way. Great. And do you remember what you talked about the first time you came here to preach? Well, the first time I came to preach with a view, I talked about Brussels sprouts. <laughs> that was my uh, thing. We were talked about burdens and not carrying things. and So, yeah, that's something nobody forgot, I think. 
Um, this is a kind of difficult question because 12 years is a little bit hard to summarise, I guess, but are there any really key memories that stand out from your time here? I'm not sure about specific single memories. I think for me, what I will remember is um, celebrating baptisms, um, the, the things that we've done in the schools in particular and how we've managed to to do more in the schools and have a, have a bigger presence there, welcoming groups of children here into the building. And um, But single things, every, everything that I can think back on, I can find so many things. If I, if I started to say it was this, there'd be another thing and then another thing. So there's not one individual moment it's a combination of so many things done with other people and seeing how the journey has progressed, how we sort of learned new things together, achieved new things together. Um, and when you were coming here, did you have a clear vision of why God was calling you here to Bethel? There was, there was a sense of coming to, to encourage the church to be more present in the community but also a sense of understanding that to do that there was there needed to be more understanding of who we were as individuals and as a as a community so it's not a surprise that discipleship was at the heart of what I came here thinking that that was you know the, one of the key things to do um, and, and I think we've kind of achieved that uh, I think there's still lots that can be done i don't think that i could walk away from here and say you know we've got there but i think we've got as far along the journey as we could together towards a deeper discipleship and a, a, a much more powerful presence in the community now so i think my next question kind of leads on nicely from that is there something that you particularly want us to hold on to something that you've you've shared while you're here that you as you leave you really want us to hold on to i can leave a pause and let everybody else fill in the next two words deeper discipleship um it's not just what i will leave want to leave here and hope carries on it's what i will take into my next uh, challenge at Northfield is deeper discipleship. I think it should be at the centre of everything every church is up to, that every Christian is, is trying to focus on how do I become a better follower of Jesus? How do I make sure my relationship with Jesus is, is as deep as it can be? Um, because that, I believe, is the starting point for anything else that we want to do. If we want to engage in mission, if we want to do outreach, if we want to go into our schools, if we want to talk to our neighbours, if we want to make a difference in the world close by or miles away, it begins with deeper discipleship. It begins by knowing what we believe. And I, th I still think there's a lot for all of us to, to learn there. Um, daily, just keep working at being, being better disciples. That's what I'd hope continues to happen at, at Bethel. I don't really like this word, but I can't think of a better one to, um, to use. Is that, what are you most proud of about your time here? I guess everything that we as a church have achieved together. There, again, there isn't a single thing that I, I would say that that's a standout moment. When we did that, that was brilliant. I think there's so many things that roll in together. The, the way the church has grown and has grasped the challenges that we faced. We've had some difficult things to deal with as a church. It's not always been easy. It's not been, you know, straightforward. Everything's good. Everything clicks into place. There have been times when there have been quite serious challenges for us to overcome and difficulties. But I, I believe. The fact that we've got through those, that's what I'm proud of, that we've managed to tackle difficulties together. We've shared disagreements, we've shared different points of view, but come through it stronger. Um, and that, that to me is a key of a good 
church community. Um, one where differences, disagreements, challenges can be overcome together. So I guess that, that, that would be what I'm most proud of, which is everybody that's been part of Bethel for the last 12 years, I suppose. And uh, obviously, as, as a minister, we often think of what, uh, what you teach us, what you bring, bring to us. What do you think you've learned from the family at Bethel that you'll, that you'll take on with you? A little bit more patience, <laughs> which is always good. Um, I guess it goes in hand with this thing about what am I proud of? that we're all on this journey together. Not that I didn't know that before, but um, I hope I've learned better to, f to take people with, uh, together on the in the same direction. Um, I think I've learned t to deal with some of those challenges that, that college and Bible college and university never teach you. They do all sorts of good stuff on theology and doctrine, but they don't teach you how to deal with the day-to-day -day challenges of things. Um, Humour. Just being able to apply a good sense of humour to all the things that we, we do. There's so much that I've learned to so many people. Um, if I tried to start naming them now, I know I'd just end up in tears, so I'll probably avoid that right now. As, as you said, there, there, have obviously, there have been challenges. Are there, what, are there, is there anything in particular, personally, you feel has really helped grow your faith while you were here? Um, well, obviously, you know, we, we moved here at a point with Ben, uh, recently diagnosed with cancer, and a year later, Ben died. And, and that could have been a, a real turning point in any direction, almost. Uh, but the support we got here, um, the understanding and the encouragement we got, for me, it really helped me to strengthen my faith, to come out of that challenge, feeling closer to God, which I still sometimes know other people struggle to understand, and maybe I struggle to explain, but um, you know, we, we, I know that we moved here when Bethel had been in pastoral vacancy for a few years. The church were anticipating a new minister coming and a new minister taking charge of things and getting on with things and that what they got was a family that really needed looking after for a year coping with with what was going on with Ben and all of those things and that's what we got that amazing love and care that pulled us through that for me personally and obviously uh moving forward to something new, something that you feel God's calling a new, a new calling or a calling in a new place. Um, what are you particularly looking forward to about moving to Northfields? The challenge of something new. It's interesting as, as it gets closer. It's, it's been a long period from saying yes to going to Northfield and now just a week away from actually physically moving. And I think six months ago, what I thought I was going to do is something different to what I feel I'm, I'm going to be facing now as I, as I head off to Northfield. This is a, a strange time to be moving church, to be moving to get to know 100 or so, 120, 30 people without being able to meet them without being able to, to get together with them regularly and work together to, to discover well, where, where God's calling us to. But I think there's huge opportunities too, 
huge opportunities at Northfield, as there will be here, to discover what church looks like in the future. I think it's going to be radically different and not just for the short term, not just for lockdown, not just for post-lockdown. I think the shape of church is going to change forever and we have to find ways to embrace that and make it something positive. You know, I'm confident that God, the Bible says God can make good out of all situations and I'm absolutely confident of that. So I'm looking forward to new, new challenges to just seeing what God can do with me and through me. And I'm, I'm not 100% sure what, that, what those challenges are yet. I just know that there's something that God needs me to do. I think, you know, he's going to reveal that more and more as, as I make that step over. What are you going to miss most about living here in this area? So many things. <clears throat> Making the decision to move, to accept the call to, to Northfield, came at the point at which I knew I could stay here forever. That Bethel and Swavesy was somewhere that I could quite happily you know, work through the rest of my ministry and get to retirement here. And that might sound strange, but it was that, maybe above all, that made me understand and realise that, that God was calling me to something different. Um, the people, the, the amazing countryside and the things around us, Cambridge, Heifer's Bookshop and all its board games. <laughs> Can I miss that? <clears throat> um, the love of, of so many people here in, in the village, um, not just in the church, but in, in the community, the wider community. Um, it's not always easy being a minister. It sometimes feels a bit difficult to get in close to people. Um, but I, I, I will miss my, my days in schools, in the primary schools, in the college. Um, just the warmth with which we've been held and the the care with which people have held us for 12 years. Um, the puddings. Yeah. And you touched on it briefly um, before, but how's, how is it saying goodbye in a, in, in a time like this? Really hard. Um, when, when I accepted the call to Northfield and asked if, they would, if it would be okay to give six months notice instead of three, that was because I felt I was going to really struggle to say goodbye properly to people that I've known for so long. And then along came the pandemic and in some ways that six months has felt quite long but in other ways, it's it's zipped past really fast, and here I am a week from actually packing up and going. It's hard to say goodbye to people you can't see properly, people you can't hug, or just just chat and laugh and relax properly with. I, I'm not great with goodbyes. I am. So part of me has sort of imagined that it might be easier because I wouldn't have to blub quite so much as I probably will on Sunday. But it's, it's hard to say goodbye properly. It's hard to leave. It's hard to leave behind something and some people, you know, people that you've... I think I've invested a lot of myself here and then to, to pull yourself out of that, to let go. We'll see what happens at the picnic. I think that will be the, the evidence of how, you know, how difficult it, it's been for the last few months, anticipating this, this actual moment. It's a bit uncomfortable. I think 
yeah, I think we're all going to find it <laughs> quite hard. We're obviously um, really sad, sad to see you go. Um, I know personally for us, it's you've been a massive part of our time here, and um, yeah, it's going to be strange. Obviously, it's going to be exciting to see what God's God's going to do here next, and we're also really excited for what God's got in store for you, where you're going. Um, yeah, you'll be definitely be missed. <laughs> uh, it is exciting for me to 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 be thinking about what what's next. What's God going to do here? That's important to me too, um, and part of having the confidence to say yes, to be obedient to God, was actually knowing that God's got something else and somebody else lined up next. It may take a little while for that to fall in place, but God's already prepared somebody for the next part of the journey here at Bethel. And that's exciting. So that's helped in, in the letting go process, in the, in the saying goodbye, I suppose. Thank you. Thank you for sharing. It's hard to sum up. No, that's well, fine. Undoubtedly, I will blub at the picnic. Um, I will probably be, probably be incoherent in trying to say thank you and goodbye to everybody. Um, uh, and I, I, I worry that I won't be able to say properly goodbye to everybody that I want to in the way that I want to and to say thank you to everybody in the way that I want to say thank you. But thank you. Where
good. I will miss Cookie the dog. Please look at after them both. Love. Amen. Amen. Okay. Dear God, I pray that David has a good life in his new church. He helped me at school. Amen, love heart. Dear Lord, please help David when he goes to his new church. Help him remember us, but also enjoy the new one. Amen. Who am I that the highest king would welcome me? I was lost, but he brought me in. slave to sin, Jesus died for me. Yes, he died for me. Who the sun sets free, who oh, is free indeed. I'm a child. David, this is my prayer for you. May God the Father prepare your journey, Jesus the Son guide your footsteps, the Spirit of life strengthen your body, 
the three in one watch over you on every road that you may follow. May the love of God be the passion in your heart, the joy of God your strength when times are hard, the presence of God a peace that overflows, the word of God the seed that you might sow. Thank you for your ministry here at Bethel and God bless you in your new calling. Amen. Well, on this David's last Sunday with us here at Bethel, uh, we've gathered in the church uh, to pray for him and to commend him to God's love and care as he moves on to pastures new over in Birmingham. Normally we would gather a bit closer together and lay hands on him, but under the present circumstances we're doing this at a distance from each other. I'd like to bring you just a few verses from Paul's letter to Timothy. It's in chapter 6. We start reading at verse 11 where it says, But you, man of God, flee from all this and pursue righteousness, godliness, faith, love, endurance and gentleness. Fight the good fight of faith. Take hold of the eternal life to which you were called when you made your good confession in the presence of many witnesses. In the sight of God who gives life to everything and of Christ Jesus, who, while testifying before Pontius Pilate, made the good confession, I charge you to keep this command without spot or blame until the appearing of our Lord Jesus Christ which God will bring about in his own time. God, the blessed and only ruler, the King of kings and Lord of lords, who alone is immortal and who lives in unapproachable light, whom no one has seen nor can see. To him be honour and might forever. Amen. Usually when I look at this short passage, I concentrate on what Paul is encouraging Timothy to do. But this time I took a different tact and it occurred to me how quickly Paul changed his target from Timothy, first of all to Jesus and the good example he set, and then to honouring God. Shall we pray together? Loving Father, we thank you for all that David has achieved with your help in his time here at Bethel, for faithfully bringing your word and helping us to understand it for introducing new ways to worship and help us grow spiritually, for opening doors into our community, which at one time seemed shut fast. Now, as David begins a new and challenging phase in his ministry, we pray that he will feel assured of the presence and power of the Holy Spirit with him and he will be enabled to grow your kingdom in Birmingham. We praise you for all that is past and trust you for all that's to come. Amen. Father, we thank you for David, for the many blessings, prayers and challenging messages that he has faithfully brought to Bethel from you. God, we don't know what the pathway ahead will bring for David, but I do know this, that as he continues to place himself daily in your care, you will guide and teach and direct his words and actions. 
God, we pray that his time at Bethel has fulfilled the plan you had for this time. We thank you that David has stepped out in faith to answer your call to move to Northfield, even though your purpose may not have been fully revealed to him yet. In 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 7, the Spirit of God does not make us timid, but gives us power, love and self-discipline. God, we release David from Bethel Church and pray that he will be filled to overflowing with your spirit to enable him to carry out the work you have for him to do at Northfield. And David, may God give you the wisdom, imagination, energy and drive that you will need to lead your new church. And our God, may David serve you as you deserve in everything he does according to your will through Jesus Christ our Lord. We ask this in your mighty name, God. Amen. David, I have a couple of scripture passages which I'd like to leave with you. The first one is from uh, Philemon, um, chapter 1. Well, there's only the one chapter in Philemon, of course. But Paul says, I thank my God, making mention of you always in my prayers, hearing of your love and faith which you have toward the Lord Jesus and toward all the saints, that the sharing of your faith may become effective by the acknowledgement of every good thing which is in you, in Christ Jesus. For we have great joy and consolation in your love, because the hearts of the saints have been refreshed by you, brother. And from Philippians, Paul writes, Let your gentleness be known to all men. The Lord is at hand. Be anxious for nothing, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Finally, brethren, whatever things are true, whatever things are noble, whatever things are just, whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, and whatever things are of good report, if there is any virtue, and if there is anything praiseworthy, meditate on these things. Heavenly Father, I thank you for the great and mighty work that you have done in David's life, and the way you've led him over the years, the way that he has matured in his faith and in his trust in you. And Father, thank you for the blessings that you have placed on him and within him, that he has shared with us here at Bethel. And Father, thank you that your purpose is always to make your will known to those who will hear. And so I pray, Father, that as David listens to you, that you will reveal to him the mighty things, the wonderful things that you still wish to do through him as he moves forward from this place. Father, thank you that you have empowered him by your spirit to do what you are calling him to do. And I pray, Father, that you will enable David to release that power that you have put in him that authority that you have given him, that desire to follow you and be obedient to you. Father, that he might witness you 
doing great and marvellous things in the new church that you are taking him to at Northfield. Father, thank you that Jesus said that as we go, he would never leave us. And I'm confident, Father, that David knows that. And Father, I know that you will be truthful and faithful to your word. And so I pray, Father, that increasingly David might know you, walking with him, motivating him, empowering him, leading him to do your work. Lord, give him great joy in what you've called him to do as he leaves us and goes a bit further along the path that you have mapped out for him. Father, I bless you for him and I bless David in your name that he might be a true man of God, a workman that needs not to be ashamed of his work but a workman who is never ashamed of the master builder that is working in him. Father, thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Bless, Lord, the words that I speak, that they might bring comfort. Bless, Lord, these hands I use, that they might be of service. Bless, Lord, this path I tread, that it might be safe to travel. Bless, Lord, this life I live, that it might bring you glory. The blessing of the God of life be with us in our journeying. 
the blessing of the risen Christ be with us in our following. The blessing of the Holy Spirit be with us in our questioning. The blessing of the heavenly host be with us in our worshipping. Bless, O Lord, each hour, each day, that we shall walk with you. Amen. Thank you for joining us for today's service from Bethel Baptist Church in Swavesey. Here are the notices for this coming week. Uh, today at 12 p.m. there will be a Zoom coffee and chat session. And if you have registered to attend the Bethel event later today, please don't forget to bring your own food and drink and also chairs or blankets to sit on. Please enter the venue via the main gate <clears throat> rather than the entrance to the industrial units and Sue will be on hand to direct you to the parking area. The presentation to David, Abigail and Christopher will take place at about 2.30 and the conclusion of the presentation will mark the end of the Bethel event. The church will not be open for private prayer this evening. The next time the church will be open for private prayer will be on Thursday the 3rd of September at 11am. All the other regular Zoom sessions will be held during the week, but as you know the Wednesday house group is not meeting until later in September, and if you're unsure about what's going on in your particular house group, then I suggest you contact your house group leader and uh, find out uh, what the program is. Next Sunday, the 6th of September, there will be a 10 o'clock prayer session on Zoom. The morning service will be available on Facebook and YouTube as usual. And then all the other Zoom activities will take place as normal. As I said, thank you so much for joining us this morning. It's been a pleasure to have you with us. And we trust that this coming week will, for you, be a time where you experience God's grace, God's love, God's peace, God's direction in your lives. So may the Lord bless you in everything you do. Thank you.